Hi guys, welcome to another video. This one's on presence tables and activity networks for part of the Further Maths course. My name is, as it always is, Darren, otherwise known as Maths Guru, and it's really, really good to see you. Thank you very much for joining me. If you haven't already done so, can you click like on my uh, video, uh, head over to YouTube, that'd be greatly appreciated. Apparently the algorithm works on likes, which is probably why uh, no one watches my videos, because no one's really liking my videos. So if you can do that, greatly appreciated. MathsGuru.com is there for you as well, with downloadable notes and time codes and videos all structured by textbook. Oh, I'm doing what I can. Oh, and exam questions. Don't forget those are all important exam questions. Um, what are we dealing with today? Well, we're going to look at activity networks and pre precedence tables. Let's see, I keep wanting to say precedence now. What is that all about? And why we use dummy activities and how to go from one to the other. You're going to say, what is all... Basically, it's just building on all the stuff that we have done before. Now, if I was going to recap all the stuff we've done before, it'd be a video in itself. So head over to Maths Guru, download the notes, look at the videos uh, if you don't have any clue what any of this network stuff is about, because trust me, it's going to be gold. The last three videos of which this is one of them, basically takes all of the work we've been doing and, and just makes it really, really funky and actually interesting, but a little bit challenging as well, right? It's, you've got to understand this stuff. So please, if you don't know what you're talking about, stop at a moment, go back and watch some other videos. I looked this morning uh, when I made my coffee, and uh, I just have instant coffee. I can't be doing with paying $4.50 for somebody to make me a coffee. I don't really enjoy coffee. I have one because my mum told me when I was young I had to have a hot drink every day, and it's just stuck with me. Thanks, mum. All right, so when I make my coffee, what do I do? Well, there's certain stages to making a coffee. Right, you're not going to put the hot water in before it's boiled. You're not going to put the you're not going to boil the water until the water's in the thing. You're going to put the coffee in and the sugar before you pour the water in. There are stages in which you have to do these activities. If not, you're going to end up with a right royal mess. You'll end up with a cold coffee um, with milk splashed all over the side, and as if by magic they disappeared. You may have realized I've recorded this video before. Anyway, back to what we're doing. So if we were looking here, this thing uh, that I'm uh, drawing an arrow to now is called a precedence table. It effectively lists the activities that need to be completed for a particular job or a task. So if we were making a coffee, for example. The really funky one is this one here because it actually tells us the order in which we have to do things. Yes, it looks confusing, you know, in a recipe, if they gave you one of these, people would throw away the recipe books, wouldn't they? It'd be random. But you're a mathematician, you're a further mathematician, we can do this. So these are my seven activities. What on earth do these letters mean? Well, basically, a immediate predecessor tells you that, for example, activity C cannot start until activity A is complete. Ah, the predecessor. Activity D cannot begin until activity B is complete. Here, activity F cannot be completed until activity C and D are complete. Or sorry, activity F can't be started until C and D is complete. All right. What do we do with this precedence table? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we draw something called an activity network, right? So we've already got the idea of networks. This is going to have arrows on it because it's all directed because we've got to make sure that we move this through this thing from the start to the end. So it's almost like those flow diagrams we had before with the, you know, the water and what have you. I'm going to show you quickly how to do this one here. I tend to start from both the beginning and the end at the same time, which on the video will now look weird because that's the beginning and that's the end. Anyway. So the first thing you do is you do a dot and you write start and you do a dot and you write end. Now there is no reason to believe that you're gonna get this right the first time. I will because I've done this before, twice as it would appear. But the point of it is you're gonna do this by trial and error. So I'll explain a bit more of that when we go through. So the first thing I do is tend to start with the activities at the beginning because there is no immediate predecessor for activity A and B. I am now gonna have these branch off of the start. There is my A with an arrow, there is a B with an arrow, right? So they can basically start at the same time because they're not dependent on anything. If I now go to the other end, we know that activity G can only start when E and F is finished. So first things first, we've got to have a line here that stands for G because that's an activity in its own right. And then we've got to have coming into that E and F, lines from E and F. Now, you would imagine that I'm going to do them in alphabetical order, but I'm not. I'm actually going to do F here and E here. Why? Because I know the answer. So, do you see how this is beginning to build up? Yeah, it's a network. So, I've now done G, can only start when E and F are finished. What about F? F can only start 
when C and D have finished, right? So here we go, there is the start of F. I'm now gonna draw two lines in that's gonna stand for C and D. And if I needed to and I forgot them the, the wrong way around or things started to cross over, I can always rub it out and swap them, doesn't matter. So there we go, we've done that bit now and I crossed them off just to make sure I don't get confused. E can only start when B has finished. Oh, okay then, so what I'm actually gonna do now is just make my B line a bit longer because there's the end and I'm gonna join that to E in one, he says, relatively smooth line. And what you can imagine here, guys, is this is why a pencil and a rubber is really, really useful. Don't ever do these things in pen. All right, so that's that one there. D can only start when B has finished. Well, here's the end of B. I'm now gonna connect that one there to the start point of D, and I must do my arrow there. All right, no. Now again, do you see what's happened there? I've made a mistake and I'm gonna leave this in because that's annoying. Yeah, this is where your rubber comes in handy because what on earth does this stand for? Well, D seems to be starting after some other activity is finished. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rub out D and I'm gonna rejoin it. Yeah, so there is now the end of B and I now know activity D is actually gonna go this way. It starts when B is finished and it joins to F, right? So that's why pencil and rubber are so, so important, yeah? What about uh, C can only start when A is finished, so there we go, I can connect A all the way there, and ladies and gentlemen, ka there is my activity network. Now again, they've got no weights on this, there's no idea of costs or time taken, that's coming in the next video. But there is the basics of what we're gonna do. I always start, you know, do the start and the end. It's so important to make sure you have a start point and an end point, okay? Let's have a look at another example. Thank you very much, Cambridge, by the way, for letting me use your examples. Really, really appreciate you. Draw an activity network from the precedence table shown on the right. Awesome. It, uh, now you're going to say, haven't you just done that one? They all look the same. In this solution, the activity network will be drawn from the finish back to the start. To be honest with you, nah. I know Cambridge has said, let's do that. I'm not. I don't think it's too nah. I'm starting from the beginning and the end and trying to meet in the middle. It Trust me, it makes life so, so much easier. Right, so what's the first thing we need to do? We put a dot. For start, I'm gonna do a dot for end. All right, so the start, activity A, is the only one that comes from the start. So there we go, there's a line, there's a dot, there's an arrow, and there's activity A. H, all right, so we know H is the only one that's gonna finish. So there is activity H. He says writing whatever that is. Has to have E, F, and G coming from it. All right, E, F, and G, right? So let me see what we can do. There's E, I'm gonna draw a straight line there, F, and there's G. Now, I'm not gonna put a start on there yet because we don't quite know where they're gonna start. We don't know what they're gonna to connect to. So there's just three lines coming into H. There we go. So G can only start when D has finished, okay. Actually, I'm gonna go back here because look, if we go now go back to the start, what do we notice? I've got these three A's. So that means that activity B, C, and D can only start when A has completed. So actually, I've now got three lines coming off here, B, C, and D. Ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. Here is B, here is C, and here is D. All right, so actually, I've done those three there now. Right, so let's go back. G can only start when D has completed. Well, okay then, so I'm now just gonna extend that line there a little bit, do a dot, extend that line there. That's fine, we've done that one, good. F can only start when C is finished. So there's the start of F, and we'll now just connect C and make sure that arrow is pointing there. And hopefully this is gonna work beautifully. E can only start when B is finished. I'm gonna extend B a little bit up there. There's my dot to signify the start of E. And ka -ching. thank you very much. Now yes, we could have done this all the way backwards, but trust me, start, end, try and meet them in the middle, so, so much, much easier. So what are important things to note? Right, when activity has no immediate predecessor, it comes directly from the start vertex. And again, make sure you draw a start vertex. Activities which are not immediate predecessors lead to the finished vertex. Oh, thank you very much. Yes, yeah, so you notice here E, F, and G, activity H. We then make sure to join vertices to the right predecessors. That seemed fairly obvious to me. Right, who are you calling a dummy? Now, sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, we have to involve something called a dummy, um, a dummy connection. It has no weight, but it shows us that we can only start one activity when another one is finished. Okay, and you're gonna go, what? 
I know. If we have a look here, we've got activities A, B, and C with no immediate predecessor. So I was going to draw my start, and we would have A, B, and C coming off it. There's my arrows, and there's A, B, and C. Now, D can only start when A and B have finished. Well, here's activity D, but we got a bit of a problem. How do I get this to work now? Because I can't connect this line here to two lines, can I? That doesn't make any sense. So what we actually do is I connect B all the way to D. That's fine, that works. We've got D working that way. A extends a little bit up. And then what we do is we draw a dot there and a dotted line down with an arrow. And that there is my dummy. Excuse me, who are you calling a dummy? All right, so we're going to continue. That looks a little odd. Let's see what we can do, because we can always redraw this, remember. Okay, so what are we doing now? So that now, that means at this point here, D can only start when A and B have finished. Awesome. ka -ching. Right, then we've got this activity E, which can only start when B and C are finished. But again, activity D and E don't seemingly have anywhere to go. So they must be my last two things. They must be the last two activities to complete. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to say, well, okay, there is my end. I'm going to have E coming off of it, which must go that way. E can only begin when B and C have finished. Well, we can connect C to E. There we go, job done. But we've got to wait for B to finish. Ah, okay, well, what do we do? Well, I have to draw a dummy network in and that basically says we can only start this point here when B and C is finished. Now that diagram looks a bit weird, yes? So what we can actually do is refactor it. I'm actually gonna delete that little line there, D. I'm gonna delete that dummy there, and I'm actually gonna connect D to A. So there is D, because remember D can actually only start when A and B is finished. So I could have connected it to A. Previously I connected it to B. But what have I got to do now? Well, I've got to make sure that I put that dummy back in. And in this situation, the dummy would now have an arrow pointing that way. That looks a much nicer network. I don't think the previous example is wrong in any way, shape or form. This just seems to be a nicer networked looking diagram. Let's have a look at one more example, see if there's any dummies in this. I'm fairly sure there is a dummy. Right, so let's see, we've got to start. And we will draw our end. So what do we have? G seems to be my final activity, so I'll write G there. It's the only one going into my end. So E and F seem to be coming off of there, so let's draw E and F at this moment just like that. There is E and F, so I've done that. A and B seem to come from the start, so there's my A and there's my B coming from my start, A and B. So I've done those two. C comes off of A, all right, so C can only happen when A finishes, so I'm going to do a C there. Uh, C can only start when A, right, D can only start when B finishes, all right, so I've got a D coming off here. So D can only, sorry, D can only start when B is finished, yep, right, okay, let's see. F can only start when C finishes. And E can only start when C and D finishes. Right, okay, so E, I'm gonna do that one first. E is connected to C and D. So there we go. So there we've got the E can only start when C and D is finished. Isn't a dummy because C and D can both connect there. F can only start when C has finished. Now in this situation here, I could draw a line here, but then actually that's not gonna work, right? So I now know that's wrong because F can only start when C is finished. And this comes to the idea then that basically we have a problem with our diagram and because I've chosen E and F the way they are, I'm actually gonna swap them over and see what happens there. So I'm gonna rub that out and see what happens. So let's just draw them again, not have them E and F, let's have F and E. Right, so C can only start, sorry, F can only start when C is finished. So actually, there we go, I can connect those two together because that's going to work beautifully. Right, what do we say? E can only start when C and D are connected. So I can actually connect E to D, 
but now I have to put a dummy in because C and D have to lead into E. And in this situation, there is my dummy and that there I'm gonna put. Now again, what we call it is, generally speaking, they call it D, but you're gonna put the word dummy in for this moment in time. And again, just wanna say, it's perfectly okay to make mistakes on these things, to start and then rub it out and go, hold on a moment, that doesn't quite work. Swap um, two of the N ones if you need to. Like I did there, I had E and F, I swapped it to F and E, no big problem. Lastly, can we go from a, uh, what is it, activity network to a precedence table? All right, let's see what we can come up with. So I'm gonna draw a table. Remember, we're gonna have two columns. We're gonna have our activity. And we've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and J. That's a lot. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, <laughs> I'm gonna do I and J there. And let's see what happens. So well, this is our immediate predecessor. All right, so A basically comes from the start. So that's gonna be a dash. So there's A. B and C can only start when A has finished. All right, so B can only start when A is finished and C can only start when A is finished. Awesome, so I'm gonna put a tick there, a tick and a tick. All right, D can only start when B has finished. So D can only start when B has finished. All right, it, it, C can only start when E has finished. So hold on a moment. E can only start when C has finished. I think I said that the wrong way around. So E can only start when C has finished. All right, we're now on F and do you notice what's happened? We got that dummy in. So F now can only start when D and C are finished. So F can only start when C and D are finished. Oh, thank you very much. Actually, I prefer doing it this way than the other way. G can only start when D is finished. So G can only start when D is finished. What have we got here? H can only start when E and F are finished. So H can only start when E and F are finished. I can only start when G is finished. So I can only start when G is finished. And J can only start when G and H are finished. So J can only start when G and H are finished. Oh, hold on a moment. <laughs> Did you see the snake? G. Oof, that's not just tricky, but G, F and G involve that dummy. So just to go back, um, that would have to have, so let me see, G can only start when C and D have finished as well. So C and D. Oi, those dummies, oi, 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 oi. But ladies and gentlemen, let's just check, was that the right answer? It was indeed, how did I know? Because I checked and that's how I knew, right? So again, oh, being human sucks, doesn't it? Because we make silly mistakes. But that's the whole point of this, is testing your understanding and, and, and those tricks. Right, I'm done. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully you found it useful. Uh, if you did, can you leave a comment below in YouTube if you're there, like the video and let your mates know. Greatly appreciate it. It's a couple more minutes video, a uh, couple more minutes of the video coming. If not, I hope to see you in, in a later video. Bye-bye. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Yes, this is the end of another video. If you haven't already done so, can you click on my subscribe button? Yes, it doesn't mean anything other than the fact that I know that you are watching. Yes, it's greatly appreciated. Otherwise, I feel like I'm sitting here just talking to myself. And then, yes, there is mathsguru.com, of which you can see a still of now. And what is over there? Well, all the videos ordered by textbook, ordered by topic. You can search for the videos. You can download notes time codes, exam questions, and so, so much more coming up. Yeah, it's absolutely free to join. So I'm done. Thank you very much. I hope to see you in another video. Give me a shout out to your mates if you can. I just want to make sure that everyone finds maths interesting and easy. All right, take care, guys. See you again. Bye. Stay safe.